Hello, no one asked me to make a video on this, but I myself wanted to make a video on this. Purely driven by my rage regarding this subject. If you have watched my other videos you know that I am a fairly reasonable person, at least I think so. I usually don't feel really strong about anything, but this in particular gets to me. This will kind of be like a discussing common unpopular opinions video, but not really. I will only be discussing one opinion, because realistically speaking there is only one common unpopular opinion on Mamamoo. Mamamoo are racist trash and I will never stand them. It's sad that their songs are good, because they are so problematic. The way people express their opinions on Mamamoo gets to me on a personal level and in this video I will explain to you exactly why. In this video, I will spill all the tea on Mamamoo's problematic past. Are they truly as racist and problematic as people make them out to be? And of course this video also comes with a disclaimer. I am a Mumu. But I will not defend what they did or make up excuses to make them look better. This video will not sugarcoat certain incidents. Even as a fan you can be able to admit the wrongs of a group you love. However I do want to explain to you why the way people's attitude towards Mamamoo bothers me. If you are skeptical, I ask you to give this video a chance. If you haven't watched every unpopular opinion video like I have, then you may be oblivious as to what I am talking about. Or maybe you have seen these opinions in some of the videos and you might be confused about what exactly it is that Mamamoo did for people to call them highly problematic. Let's break it down. In 2017 Mamamoo held their concert called Musical Curtain Call in Korea. They had created a video for their fans to watch at the end of the concert. The video they had created was a parody of Bruno Mars' Uptown Funk. To mimic the people in the video the members of Mamamoo had altered their skin tone and made it darker. Bruno Mars's Uptown Funk Mamamoo's parody, the use of blackface is considered to be highly offensive. A lot of people, rightfully, started taking offense to Mamamoo's actions. The K-pop community on several social media platforms were quick to cancel Mamamoo, if you live in a continent that is not America. You might be unaware of what blackface is and why it is considered to be offensive. I'll give you a quick history lesson. African American people in America have a long history of oppression and discrimination. They were treated extremely poorly and were seen as inferior. Blackface was part of this discrimination. As the African American community was seen as not equal they did not have rights and were for example not allowed to act in theater. If they wanted to portray an African-American character, a non-black actor would paint their face black with shoe polish and overdraw their lips to resemble stereotypical facial features of someone who is black. They would create caricatures to mock and ridicule black people. They would dance to their music and wear their clothing. They were basically appropriating African culture and making profit off of it. This continued up until the mid-1900s somewhere around the 70s, which is not that long ago if you think about it. As you can see the use of blackface is a very negative aspect of the American culture. People had a valid reason to be upset with Mamamoo. A lot of people still hold Mamamoo accountable for what they did back in 2017 and refuse to listen to their music. However, a lot of people that consider Mamamoo to be cancelled and label them as racist oftentimes don't know that Mamamoo repeatedly apologized for their insensitive actions. A lot of Mumus brought it to Mamamoo's attention that the use of blackface is extremely offensive and hurtful to the black community. Both Mamamoo and their entertainment company wrote out an apology, in English and Korean, and posted it four hours after this had occurred. Here are the apologies that their company Rainbow Bridge World and Mamamoo themselves posted. The video was cut from the following concert dates. Mamamoo also took the time to apologize to their fans in person who attended the next date of their concert. 
As far as my own opinion on this goes, I think that no one should alter the color of their skin to portray another race. As we now know blackface was used to mock and degrade the African American community and I think that it is absolutely disgusting. I absolutely do not condone what they did. I was shocked when I found out about this and immediately looked up if they had apologized for it. I was relieved to find out that they did. Does this make them racist? No, it doesn't in my opinion. I truly believe that they did not do this with malicious intent. They did not create that video with the intention of degrading the black community. From their apology, I feel that they are really regretful about hurting their fans through their actions. They were, as they stated themselves, uneducated and ignorant. And no, stating that they were ignorant and uneducated does not erase the mistake they have made. Their actions and behavior in the future, however, proves that they have indeed grown and learned from their mistakes. Some people still felt salty towards Mamamoo and would reach so far, that their back nearly broke, to find more reasons for them to still be problematic. And that is where my problem mainly lies. Because oof. People just jump on the hate bandwagon when it comes to Mamamoo. They have read or heard that they have done blackface they label them as racists and cancel them forever. Every time I watch an unpopular K-pop opinion video and they mention that they think that Mamamoo is problematic, I see Mumus in the comments saying that Mamamoo has apologized for their insensitive actions. About 85% of the time the person who created that video responds something along the lines of, I am so sorry I did not know that they have apologized for it. And I have even, believe it or not, seen people change their opinion on Mamamoo because of it. It just frustrates me that people draw conclusions after hearing or reading one thing and they don't even bother to look into it. So, as I mentioned earlier people were still salty and kept coming up with some really creative things to keep calling Mamamoo problematic. I am here to debunk and discuss all of these myths. Myth number one. They did blackface again even after they have apologized. After they cut out the clip they originally made to Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. They recorded a new video where they dressed up as different characters. Solar was dressed up as a Korean beggar. And somehow people thought she was in blackface. The original character from the movie or TV show. Solar dressed up as the character. Now. Since beggars are homeless they will be tan, because they are out in the sun constantly. Also, she is portraying a Korean character she is not a non-black woman altering her skin tone to portray a black character. She is not in black face. Do you really think she would do that again after learning its history and knowing doing black face hurt so many international fans of color? No. Myth debunk sister. Next. Myth number two, Wasa said the N-word. Now, I can't deny this, because it happened. Everything you own in the box to the left, in the closet, that's most up, yes, if I bought a nigga, please don't pay. This was in 2014 or 2015, but people pretend that this happened after they did apologize, to prove that they're still problematic. The thing is that it's really odd that she said that word because if you look up the lyrics it doesn't say it. So, then where did she get that from? In 2014 or 2015 she was asked by a radio station to cover Irreplaceable by Beyonce. Wasa is nowhere near fluent in English and they provided her with lyrics to read off of. The lyrics they provided her with come from the site Melon, which is a popular Korean streaming site. These are the lyrics from Melon. Even in 2018 Wasa uses lyrics to be able to sing an English song.
As you can see her English isn't that great and she's reading the lyrics word for word, I showed you this, because I wanted you to understand the context. Bad English or not knowing the meaning and the history of the word of course doesn't justify this. At the end of the day she still said the word, regardless of if she knows the meaning of it or not. It's not her place to use that word as she is not black herself. But I also do think Melon is at fault for this, because why would you choose to publish lyrics on your site that contain an offensive word? You're only going to piss off a lot of people and get people who don't speak English to say that offensive word. Melon eventually replaced the lyrics. They did realize the mistake they had made. Kind of debunked, I guess. Next. Myth number three, they appropriated culture. There have been two accusations regarding this subject. 3.1 They wore bind eyes in their AZE gag music video. 3.2 Wasa appropriating black culture by wearing braids. 3.1 They wore bindies. Bindies are a part of Hinduism, but this expression of religion isn't exclusive to Hinduism. This woman, who is a Buddhist, is wearing a una. Similar symbol, but different religion. Aze Gag is a song about dad jokes. In the song they mention a joke about Buddha. Here are the lyrics to Aze Gag. The lyric where they mention Buddha is supposed to be a dad joke. Here's the explanation. Them wearing the inas, not bindies, was a reference to the dad joke about Buddha. They are not appropriating Indian culture. Solar is also a Buddhist herself. Myth debunked sister. Next. 3.2 Wasa was in blackface and wore braids. She is naturally tan and was dressed up as a clown and somehow this is offensive? Some clowns in Korea have braids. Now if you want to get offended over the way clowns look you better get offended over all clowns and their questionable hairstyles. I'm done. This video is not me trying to get you to like Mamamoo, I mean, you're free to do so if you want to. But rather to shed some light on the details that are often left out. So like, don't scream at me, please? I only touched on a couple of aspects, but there is an amazing thread on Twitter that goes into further detail. Someone also made a great video on the subject. I would highly recommend you watch it, if you are interested of course. I will link all of this in the description. In conclusion, I think that Mamamoo, in my opinion, have shown so far that they have learned from their past mistakes. Yes, I do think that idols should be held accountable and take responsibility for their mistakes, but I also do think that the K-pop community should allow the idols to grow from their past mistakes instead of holding it against them. We don't come out of the womb with the knowledge of all of the horrible discriminative things that have happened in human history. A lot of people will be uneducated and ignorant as to what happened, definitely if it isn't a part of the history of their country or continent. But please, take the time to educate them and to help them understand, why what they did was wrong. You can't learn unless you are taught. If they then show that they haven't learned from their mistake and continue to show the same behavior, then you have the right to call them problematic. I know that this video is kind of different from my regular discussing common unpopular opinion series, but I hope that you still found this somewhat interesting and enjoyed watching. As with my previous videos I hope we can have a civilized discussion on this topic. If you would like for me to create more of these types of videos, Feel free to let me know.